Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we are doing the Aurora Shell Challenge by Little Simsy and this one's a little bit weird. There's a random hole in the ground and uh, some overhanging walls and it's, it's weird but it's not as bad as the Maxis Shell Challenge was so I am thankful for that. I will say that when I did this, I actually did it before I did the Maxis Gel Challenge and I was convinced this was the worst one I have ever done and that Lil Simsy was my worst enemy. But honestly, now I think I may have changed my opinion. I think Maxis might be my worst enemy. Either way, this shell challenge was pretty fun to do and it was definitely a challenge and I'm glad I was able to get it done and it turned out pretty cute in my opinion. This build does not have any CC in it and I don't even know if I used the tool mod in it very much, so it is a pretty vanilla build. I also decided out of spite for Lil Simsy making this build challenge so difficult that I would specifically go out of my way to not use as much blue as possible in this entire build, which means that I ended up using a lot of green and neutral colors because I wanted to do a more traditional style of build, but it is really hard to find a traditional swatch of things that aren't blue. So I decided that I would challenge myself even more out of spite. If you watch any of Lil Simsy's videos, you know that she is known for doing a blue suburban, which makes sense. Blue is the best color in this game. A lot of swatches on things, especially in base game or earlier packs, are really, really strange and there's not a good neutral color and blue is the closest you can get. But instead of give myself the easy way out with this shell challenge, I decided that I would be spiteful and make it green and every other color I could think of. I did have to cut out quite a bit of this build because I spent a really, really long time trying to figure out a floor plan because it's super weird and there's a box in the middle of this shell. And so I had to cut some of that out and this video is still pretty long. Hopefully that is okay though and we can just sit here and hang out and chat a little bit while I build this house in speed build fashion. Also, just so you guys know, um, this build is probably going to be my last build that isn't pre-recorded. I am going out of town for the holidays and I also have finals right now. So I'm trying to pre-record a little bit and get ahead so there are still videos going up while I am gone and while I am busy. So there will still be videos going up for the next couple weeks, but all of them will have been recorded in the next like week or so um, and they will be going up all the way hopefully through New Year's. I did make a couple of really cute little houses and I also made a couple of really cute little sims. So hopefully you guys like those and you guys will get to see those over the next coming weeks. I am super excited because I am going to Wyoming to see some family and I haven't seen snow yet this year and I live in California so you know there really isn't any snow except for occasionally once a year since I live up north but I am going to be surrounded by snow for the week or so that I'm there and I am super excited for it and I'm probably going to terrorize my brother with snowballs and drive him crazy, but it will be a great time and I am very excited. Also, I'm so sorry if my microphone keeps changing in this video or readjusting or sounds weird or whatever. I had to move my microphone and I think I have it set up okay. I know it's not as good as it was before and I had finally just figured out some kind of microphone setup that sounded decent and now I'm having to completely redo it. Uh, my mic arm broke and so I'm waiting on a new one and this one is currently kind of adjusted and propped up. So hopefully it sounds okay and I will be getting a new mic arm. Hopefully soon, hopefully before I have to pre-record all my voiceovers for the next like month. Um, but hopefully I'll also be able to get that mic arm situated and sounding decent with my microphone. Until then, I'm really sorry. I'm trying my best and I'm still figuring stuff out. Anyways, how have you guys been? I hope you have been well. If you are in school, then I hope finals are going well if that's what you have going on right now. I have been drowning in finals and like mostly final assignments. I have two essays for two really difficult classes that I have to finish up in the next like few days. I finish school on Wednesday so I have to get those done and I have done 
barely the outlines of them so far. So I need to do those and I'm stressing about it. And I know if I just did them that I wouldn't stress about them so much, but I don't really want to do them. I would rather do literally anything else. So that's how I've been, but I hope you guys are doing better and having an easier time with school or work or going into the holidays. I know that the Christmas and holiday season can be a little bit stressful for people, so I hope that you are doing well and taking care of yourself. I know I say that kind of thing a lot, but I think it's really important because I know like as someone who has struggled with mental health issues, especially depression for most of my life so far, that it can be really easy to get sad and, you know, be stressed over the holidays or whatever's going on in your life and you forget to do things like sleep for a whole night or eat or drink water and those things are really, really important. And so I just like to remind people as much as possible because I figure it can't hurt even, you know, neurotypical people or people who aren't struggling right now may sometimes forget to drink water and I think it's important for the people who are struggling right now to know that you know someone cares and I definitely am someone that cares so I just want to remind you guys of that as much as I can think of it. Anyways on a slightly different note going back to this build a little bit as I was building this I kind of thought it would be funny to do like I said I was doing no blue in this build and I thought that maybe this would be grandparents and then a couple of younger kids like a teenager and a toddler I think is what I did this house for and I thought it'd be really funny if this house was pretty colorless except for the color green and that these grandparents are like super super against any color but green or like beiges and so their whole house is just those colors except for the teenager's room which is in the basement and the teenager's room is pastel pop completely everywhere I used like every item from that kit. There's a bunch of blue, there's a bunch of pink, there's a bunch of green. It's like every color you could ever imagine. And I just kind of thought it was funny as I was doing that room that maybe this was a rebellious teenager who was going against what their grandparents actually wanted and was instead doing like all these bright colors and stuff like that. Of course, you could have anybody you want live in this house. It is CC free and up on the gallery. Um, but that was just my like fun little storyline that I made up in my head as I was building this house. And I think I spent like four hours working on this house, maybe even longer because I was really kind of struggling with the floor plan. Again, I know I cut that out so you don't really see it, but I was absolutely suffering with this floor plan and eventually it came together. Eventually it worked in a way that I think is halfway decent at least, but I spent way too long trying to do it. And then I was kind of done with this build for a little bit because I was so tired of looking at it and trying to think of a halfway decent floor plan. I feel like as much as I love building, I also get like super, super sick of it. And I get sick of looking at the builds I've done and I end up hating them by the end. But then I kind of have to force myself to complete it and then I really hate it at the end. So I feel like I always end up just disappointed in the way my builds look and hopefully they aren't as ugly as I actually think they are. I've been really wanting to do a dream house build for my dream house and I've been thinking about doing it and thinking about what my dream house would look like but I'm kind of scared to start on it because I know I'm just going to hate it by the end of it. And I don't want to hate my dream house because then it wouldn't be a dream house anymore. Plus, I think a dream house has a lot of pressure behind it and it would need to be like perfect basically. And I don't know, I think if I end up doing it, I'm going to have to do it like over a very long period of time. And kind of the way I was thinking of doing it is build the shell and then do like live building room by room. They would be pretty short videos and there would probably be a lot of them, but I think that's probably the best way to approach it because I don't want to feel overwhelmed or like there's a bunch of things that I have to get just right. Anyways, I got super distracted talking about other stuff, but back to the build here. Um, we are working on the kitchen right now and I was really struggling to figure out like what kind of um, color scheme I wanted to go for for the kitchen. I ended up going with the green swatch, which I felt like kind of matched the living room. Like I said, I kind of thought it might be funny to 
have a little storyline that basically the grandparents that own this house don't like any colors except for the color green. That's not originally what I was going for, which is why the whole house was painted that like teal color on the inside. But eventually I decided that like the whole green thing would be kind of funny. And you'll see later, like I said, the teenager's room in the basement is the only room that is like super colorful and kind of crazy. So now we are upstairs working on this hallway and this hallway is pretty simple. I just put like a bookcase and a couple of chairs as like a little sitting area and that's pretty much all I did up here. And then also up here we have like the saddest, beigest toddler bedroom you have ever seen and a really kind of boring, I guess, grandparent e room. There's not a lot in there. There's like a dresser and a mirror, I think, and like maybe a plant and some side tables. And both of those rooms have that similar kind of green swatch to downstairs. And then I also used the really cute cottage living wallpaper in the toddler room upstairs, but it is still kind of boring, I guess, even though it's got like cute animals and mushrooms on it. It's like a pretty plain swatch. So it's not the most exciting toddler bedroom, but I felt like it fit the story kind of. And at this point I had kind of come up with that story and was kind of going with that. I also really wanted to use this cute bed that we got with the werewolves pack because I love like the patchwork on it and like the quilt um, but I don't think I ended up going with this. I think I ended up using the base game toddler bed that just kind of is a little bit more boring and has that same green that I wanted to use. I also ended up putting carpet in this room because I feel like for a toddler room you probably want carpet. I don't always do that but I felt like it fit pretty well for this bedroom and the boring beigeness of it. Although I guess in actuality it'd be kind of hard to replace the carpet of a room when a toddler spills something on it inevitably whereas like a rug you can just replace but this is The Sims. It doesn't actually matter. I just felt like maybe it was a little bit more appropriate for this house. Plus, I feel like a lot of older homes, which I imagine this house is, have carpet in the bedrooms. Like even my house is very old and I have carpet in my bedroom and throughout a lot of the house, a lot of this house does not have any kind of wood floor. Actually, I don't think we have any wood floor in my house. We all we only have carpet and linoleum in like the bathrooms and kitchen area. So I think that's just kind of how older houses are. And maybe that's just my area, but I think it's more old-fashioned I guess to have carpet or linoleum everywhere versus like nowadays everybody wants to have hardwood in their whole house which I definitely agree with I think hardwoods nicer and also a little bit easier to clean and I know that it can get like dented and stuff like that but overall I think it's like nicer to have although it does kind of make the house feel a little bit colder and not as warm and welcoming as carpet might but personally, I kind of feel like carpet is dirty. I don't feel like it's as clean as hardwood could be. Although not all hardwood is super clean either, depending on how often you clean it. But like the carpet in my house, I don't want to lay on it. I don't want to like touch it. I don't even walk around barefoot because I feel like it's icky. And maybe that's just like my autism talking where I just don't like certain textures and I don't like things feeling dirty. But the carpet in my house, I won't touch it. I won't lay on it. I won't do anything. During COVID, I decided that I wanted to like be more flexible and like start stretching and that kind of stuff. And I was gonna start stretching and do it on my floor. And then I quickly realized that I had to put my hands and like my body on the carpet and I did not like that. So I found stretches online that you could do like laying down on your bed because I was not willing to touch my carpet. It was just too gross to me. And I'm even someone that like, when I go to bed, I keep my socks on. I sleep in my socks most of the time. Sometimes I kick them off, but for the most part, I keep them on when I sleep so that when I wake up in the morning, I just have my socks on already and everything's good. And like in the summertime, when I usually wear my sandals everywhere, I keep my sandals by my desk or like wherever I took them off and I put them on as soon as I like go to get up. I don't like touching it. It's just, it's icky to me. I, I don't really have like a good explanation for this except for like the tism. I feel like I keep getting distracted from the build, but <laughs> I just keep going on tangents. I'm sorry. Anyways, we are on to this rebellious, I say that in air quotes, uh, teenage room in the basement. And like I said, I completely went 
crazy with the pastel pop kit in this room. I really wanted it to be like really fun and colorful and also this is my first time building with the pastel pop kit, like doing a proper room fully with the pastel pop stuff. So I was having a lot of fun with this and I was like, you know what? I can go absolutely crazy with this room and it doesn't matter. You know, as a teenager, I can just, it, it fits in the storyline. I also didn't put stairs to this room. I just did a ladder from that weird one by one square upstairs, which means I don't know, you know, necessarily how the grandparents are going to get down here. I guess they could probably climb down the ladder, but I don't know how safe that is. Um, and the toddler certainly can't get down the ladder. But I thought it was the best way to do it. I couldn't fit stairs anywhere and so this was just all I could really do. But I think it turned out just fine and I put like a laundry room down here and uh, I think I used a ping pong table or maybe it was the foosball table. I can't remember but I put the laundry room down here and then I did like a guest bathroom and then the teenage room actually has an ensuite. So. There are actually two bathrooms in this basement, which I think is kind of unnecessary, but it's also nice, you know, if you have people down here playing ping pong or, you know, drinking at the bar, it's nice to have a bathroom right there that isn't the teenager's ensuite. Plus, I didn't even think about it, but I put the bar in this basement and I can't imagine trying to climb up a ladder after having a few drinks, like with your friends or playing juice pong. I don't know if that would go very well, but again, it's The Sims. It doesn't really matter. Um, it was just what I could get to fit. I also added the get together closet, but I used the two by two one. So it kind of sticks through the basement wall a little bit. I couldn't change that wall because this is a shell challenge. And I'm not sure if that's 100% functional as like a woohoo spot, but I thought maybe that it could be fun for gameplay. And if you actually wanted to play in this house, you could just pull that wall out if it doesn't work. So we are moving on to the exterior and I actually moved this house to a little bit of a smaller lot just because I felt like it was kind of big for the lot that I put it on but we're doing the landscaping and like the front pathway now and then I also do some stuff in the backyard and you know just some general kind of generic landscaping which is pretty much the same landscaping I always do. I also realized when I was doing the landscaping that for some reason the basement didn't transfer when I placed this lot, it should have and like the spacing was all good but it didn't transfer so I had to go back and like grab the basement as a room and then place it separately with this lot but um, I did make sure that it all lined up perfectly the way it originally was supposed to for the shell challenge so nothing changed there I just had to place it separately for some reason because this game is buggy and didn't want to work the first time. In the backyard here though, we have this like nice little pool area and there ends up being some like water balloons and lounge chairs and I think I ended up putting a dining space on the patio, the wraparound porch there. So there are some nice things for your sims to do out here and you know, if you want to replace things or do whatever you want with this build, that's fine. But I just put some like kind of generic stuff. I think I ended up putting monkey bars and a toddler slide as well because I figured the toddler would age up eventually so they had the slide while they were babies and then you know once they're a child they could play on the monkey bars. I also put a toddler pool in the backyard because I thought it might be nice since there's a regular pool to have like a little toddler pool and I always forget that object exists because it's kind of obnoxious to use and so I never actually end up using it in my builds but you know it was cute so I added it here. As I was doing this and doing like all of the landscaping and terrain painting, I was so nervous that my terrain paint was going to get deleted at some point and that I would have to do it all over again. That is probably like the worst bug for builders right now. It's driving me crazy and it's been around for so long. And every time I do any kind of terrain paint like this, I just sit there and I'm like so nervous that my terrain paint's going to get deleted because it happens to me all the time. and. I don't know why it happens or like what causes it, but it drives me crazy and I am sick of it and EA needs to fix it. It's fine though, I guess, because you know, we've been dealing with it for gosh, like a really long time. I don't even know how long that bug's been around. It feels like it's been around forever. It's probably been like a year at this point, but you know, we can deal with it. It's The Sims. There are probably much worse bugs that I don't even realize, but you know, it's, it's all fine. <laughs> 
Oh, another bug that drives me crazy that we just saw and is when you shift the house um, across the lot, if the fence is one tile away from the edge of the lot, for some reason it deletes the fence, which is super annoying. Thankfully, easier to fix than terrain paint, but still super annoying. But again, it's not something that I haven't dealt with forever and that I can't get over. Anyways, we are just finishing up the build here, adding a few little finishing touches and right towards the end here, I actually change where that table is and add the playground equipment and stuff I talked about earlier over there. But other than that, we just do a little bit of outdoor lighting and finish up some little things around the place and that is pretty much the end of the build. I hope you have enjoyed watching this and hope you come back for more. Make sure you like and comment and tell me what you think of this video and come back for more in the future if you enjoyed. I hope you have a wonderful day today. You remember that you are loved and I am proud of you. Make sure you drink some water, eat some food, and take care of yourself.